Hello, I'm here. Welcome back to Grim Dawn. We are playing with our Drain Essence Death Knight on Hardcore. Today we're gonna push forward, but before that we uh, unlocked the Blacksmith last time, there's a couple of things that I discovered slash rediscovered. You can actually craft Ectoplasm. I think this was added in the expansion. But polished emeralds are one of those things that I rarely use them, so they just keep stacking up. And soul shards also have a limited use for me. Um, especially they only go in, in in your jewelry, so and one of them is maybe enough. But you can get a tree uh, ectoplasm out of uh, this single craft. So I did it a couple times and we're now overflown with ectoplasm. So my days of just grinding through the Arcovian Undercity just kill, to kill ghosts and kill more ghosts and kill even more ghosts in order to get even just one ectoplasm per half hour or something. They're gone. We can now just craft these things. I'm very happy with this uh, with this one. So that means I upgraded the uh, amulet to this new one that we found last time. With plus one to drain essence with a shiny new ectoplasm in it. Lost, I think, one or two energy regeneration. And Drain Essence now got bumped up to the next tier of energy usage, 41.7. Level 4, again, is not going to increase the energy usage. So next skill point is going to go into uh, that one. I don't really care about unspecking some points. We get levels quite enough. So then now another point gets it to 4. And then our damage is going to be increased a bit again. Uh, another thing is we are now level 15. Starting from level 14, you get access to medals. And early on, crafting yourself a ranger's ribbon is not a bad idea. Bonus to all damage, that's some health and that's some pierce resistance. And then some random bonus stats. We are using arcane forging from uh, Duncan. So we have a chance of one of three things happening. Either we're going to get uh, energy regeneration increased by 5 to 11%. Or 3 to 5% elemental resistance, or we're gonna get 2 to 4% physique. All three of which are useful. So we crafted one of these. We rolled 9% energy regen. And on top of that, we got 5% defensive ability as a bonus stat. So, so this is the stalwart ranger's ribbon. I think we could potentially roll one with a suffix. We have the resources, so let's try once more. Ether Fire Ranger uh, Ranger's Ribbon. This one actually has a flat amount of energy regen on it. Um, and it has a little bit of fire and ether damage bonus as well as elemental resists, which is what rolled from Duncan and some offensive ability. So I think... Let's have a look which one is better for our energy regen. Old one was slightly better, or actually one whole point. Though no, this one has more resistances. But well, now we're getting to a decent state there. On the other hand, offensive ability is also neat. No, no, well, let's go with that one. Just uh, sacrifice a little bit of energy there. So, could potentially put an ectoplasm in the uh, amulet. But, as I said, I've been meaning to try out the uh, attuned lodestone. Because that's a bonus damage, uh, all damage, crit damage. And some lightning retaliation. And then a static discharge, 20% chance when hit by a melee attack. That can trigger rather often 3 meter radius main hand damage so it actually has a weapon damage component but it's a stuns target so it's a very nice defensive one so i want to see if that is actually any good and was there anything else body armor maybe a lot of items they require higher levels to become really useful uh, foot monsters this is even a purple that we could potentially craft uh, caster chest armor. All we need is uh, scrap and some money. We have both, so let's see what rolls out here. Three energy per second, that is slightly better. Actually, all the stats here are better. 
let's see if we can roll another one 1.8 so that is worse but maybe maybe we can get roll a green version of that that is nice you talk about it and it happens it's uh, it's like magic but the armor we get some, some pierce resistance we get some uh, some physique some energy regen i like it uh, our chest is still among the lower ones in terms of armor, so I'm just, I think I'm just gonna put another one of these in. And no, at some point we're gonna take those out and put something slightly better in there, but for now it is good enough. So we don't have the assistant yet, we can't yet remove items, so this one has something socketed into it. That means it goes into the box of stuff that eventually will have to become unsocketed. And the other items we can simply sell. Okay, so I had this lightning potion from last time. Might as well drink it. For the next 450 seconds we'll have increased lightning resistance, meaning we'll be capped. So we can go back to Burbage and do what needs to be done here. So first order of business is going to the harbor getting some cloth just to complete the quest i don't really care about the body armor that we're gonna get since i don't think it was a caster armor it was uh, an armor armor so to say or heavy armor and if we don't get energy from our body armor i don't want the body armor it's rather simple wow this is a uh, an ambush a bit poorly planned since if your zombies have to crawl out of the floor in order to attack me they're going to be dead before they emerge okay some uh, poisonous mobs here that's all right so there is another cave location here similar to the one we encountered all the way in the first episode it's a risk of getting ambushed but we are much better prepared now than we were back then and even then we survived and of course i'm looking for potentially for the horde of items that is be to be guarded by the boss so i think there were three different locations where it could be kind of blanking on where the third location would be so i hope it's here And it it's, no, it just looks like a heap of trash, so it will be easy to miss. But if we encounter a boss, then that's going to be it. Also, I realize some of the mobs here are actually quite a bit higher level than me. 18, 19. Now, this is a proper challenge level. 20 even. That's five levels above me. So if you're not feeling too certain of your build, be incredibly careful here. And, of course, the advice still applies. Don't stand in the water. The water is poisonous. Poison hurts. And it kills you. And there is the monster's horde, but you first need to kill Grundlepliff the Hoarder, which we're doing effectively. And that takes us to level 16. So we got plus one from the amulet with Drain Essence, so that means the next level is not going to cost us energy. So that's going to increase our base ether damage from 24 to 33 and Vitality Decay. Also quite a bit Level 5 will once again cost more energy. Um, let's see, Spectral Binding, one point per level. I still want to keep to that. And then the next one is going to go into advancing our Soldier Bar. So, boss is dead. That means the Horde is unlocked. Let's see, what do you have? Reaper's Touch. That's a part of... Oh no, that's not part of the uh, Reaper set. Let's see, what's it do? Um, physical to cold, plus two to dread, which I think is part of the uh, bone harvest upgrade. Yeah, exactly, so I don't really care. And uh, attempts and chance on attack. 1.5 second recharge, so it can trigger often. 200 degree attack arc. Three targets, main damage, cold damage, and life leech. Interesting. I wonder if this one uh, works with Drain Essence because technically, of course, it is not a melee attack. But it doesn't say that it requires a melee attack. 
the interactions between skills are not always the way you would expect them to be. So I'm, I don't know. But there was something uh, why I couldn't use it. That was because of my level. I'm one level shy. Let's see. We still have plenty of physique and I'll be boosting my soldier bar. So the next bunch of levels will be points into spirit. Because that one is a little more difficult to keep up than a physique in this build. Actually, I think I can just get away with ignoring most enemies here. And just focus on getting fabrics. And then the monsters will kill themselves. There's plenty of opportunities I'm giving them right now. If I were a fabric, where would I hide? Good look at the minimap. Are they all going to be in the building? Chances are they're all going to be in the building. Because there is indeed where the uh, stars are shining. So. so playing hardcore and completely ignoring monsters, that's not a typical thing to do. Not something that is really... Um, a habit that you want to uh, do, but, well, we can get away with it for now. Okay, that's another fabric. You're just charging to your death. Hmm, cold ones. They are useful to kill before they get to you, so that you don't get chilled by them something tight here and then there's a fabric so that resolves yet another quest meaning we can now push forward uh, hopmaster logs that's going to be net yet another lore bit which of course returns xp for reading it so bunch of beasties So out of the, the monster factions, I think beasties are mostly associated with poison. The uh, ethereals, of course, have ether damage as their thing, and there are specific cold and fire element aligned uh, zombies in there as well. Cultists, well, vitality damage, bleeding damage, and some chaos and some fire, I think. Basically everything red the cultists like. Um, the the plants, I think technically they are a subspecies of the beasts in the uh, in the swamps of the ashes of Melmoth. Of course, that's a bunch of poison as well. And well, yeah, uh, ether for the ethereals. And I think there's some some insects that have uh, piercing damage because that's. Mostly their thing, I think. Let's see, could we move through here? Yes, we can. Wonderful. So, Desecration Shrine. So, that's uh, gonna be another kill quest. Also, entrance to the cellar next to it for the uh, assistance of the inventor. Which is a very, very useful person to rescue. Because I like picking components out of armors that I no longer wear. And what do we get? Soiled trousers. Which are a joke item if ever I saw one. So, oh, the, the ability that you get throw feces. There's a lot of poison damage that it does. It's, uh, I don't know. The, the most obvious bad joke about it is, of course, that it is an incredibly shitty item. But... I don't know. If I were to make that joke, then no, no, that that would just be no. That that's just too obvious, right? So let's not make that joke. And there we have it. A darlet protected by a circle of salt, which keeps away ethereals. Also, I'm not quite sure what you're doing or where you're running. Well, but you're all gawking at. Well, it's not helping you. There's a, a secret here. With a corpse. And some treasure chests. Sometimes a good one. 
And I think I saw an amulet drop. Blood letters, platinum amulet of attack. Extra bleeding with extra duration. Bonus to offensive ability. Some energy regen, but well, we have plus one to drain essence on a current one. So I think I like that one better. The shield, uh, I don't think we're actually going to replace the shield until we get a spectral shield. At which point, that's going to be an obvious upgrade. Okay, so... Wait, did we spend the point from the devotion? Yes, it went so quickly, I even forgot about that. So, there we have it. So... A little bit of white. So, turtle is my first goal. Next goal is to go for the behemoth. Um, in order to get there, sub goal is to get the bat. So, we need green points for that. And I think we could refund the white point to get the green one. But... That is details for later. Doesn't really matter until we get more points anyway. Um, yeah, might as well go into the Warden's Villa then. Attack the waypoint. Go to town. Everybody is partying out here. Actually, there are some 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 poison zombies. So I guess the, the zombies do have some uh, some poison alignment as well. I've been, been just recently thinking about the the, the elements, the damage elements in the game and you know, who does what and when should you care about specific elements. And not most of the time, no, you just work at them from top to bottom. That That's a pretty good order. Um, no, the, the three elements are very, very common. Uh, just about every faction has something that does fire, cold or lightning. So... Maxing them out early helps. Uh, poison. Uh, as I noticed, it, it's common enough that you probably want to grab that one early as well. Hello there. You cursed someone. You. Why are you running away? I want to shield slam you in the face. Yes. I know it's not nice, but well, it's effective. And that is two more green items. And someone dropped a book. I like books. They give experience, and quite a bit of it as well. Uh, um, yeah, oh, this ring was not useful either. But uh, that, that's going to be a theme. Most items that drop will not actually be all that useful. But we can turn them into gold anyway. Or iron bits. We don't have gold here. One waypoint. And the next time we will get here, well, after pushing forward is of course, after completing the main story, this specific waypoint is the one that you want to do. Climb out of the ladder and then walk around to actually walk into the gloom vault. And I said, I think I was going to go to town and then we can push forward to the next waypoint. Yeah, that should be doable. So, Dalit has been... Rescued, to the reputation and all that good stuff. Then might as well just sell all the items we found here. I don't think... Well, I might at some point maybe just make a, a fun poison build. And this is... Well, could be a fun poison focused build. Wow, we really have been picking up a lot of health potions. Because uh, I think after the first episode... I picked 50 health potions out of my stash. And now we have over 100. So let's just uh, split it. And put it back. That's actually become a default for me to just try and keep 50 of each. Uh, oh, actually. And then either sell them or put something in the shared stash for the remainder. Uh... Well, it's decent, but not now, so I'll just put them away. Good. And all of these I will see about scrapping in between episodes. It's going to cost quite some uh, some iron bits. But uh, it does help. And we get a fortified doublet, or a double, uh, depending on how you want to pronounce it. 
One energy per second. Yeah, that's just not good enough. So it will go. And it's also level 20. It's four more levels until we can use it. Oh, we are here next to the seer. I might as well spend the effort so we can unspec this one. Because the turtle gives us white points, so it effectively maintains itself. But it gets us one white point, so we can spend it on the green one uh, next. So we can start on the bat afterwards. Then we also need the, uh, the red one and the blue one. And the bat all together will allow us to unlock the behemoth. And yeah, 20 minutes, that's definitely more time to kill more things. So clean that up, we're at 16. Yeah, nothing really to replace here. So let's push onwards. It usually, you know, by the time you have pushed through uh, Burbage, once you start on the cellar, this is where the build has actually taken shape, where now you have your main skill online most of the time. You have some, some basic support, you have some basic survivability accounted for. You've completed the tortoise, because of course you always start with the tortoise. And then that is it. So let's see, we already had that one done. So one point here, two points here. Next level, we're gonna grab a point in fighting spirit, a point in men years, and a point in military conditioning. So general rule of thumb in the uh, Warden's Cellar, just keep pushing towards the top right until you can't go to the top right anymore and then you want to go to the top left. But then you're actually in the uh, laboratory rather than in the, uh, in the cellar. Okay. Uh, the exit is blocked, so that means we have to go to the bottom right here. Is there a uh, no. confusing corridors? Okay, you're gonna get bushwhacked from behind there, but well, these are dead, and that means we're ready for the other ones. Ah, oh, there are even more. Well, I'm not complaining. Total show went up a rank. Always nice. So it's blocking how much life now? 605 damage absorption. That's an upgrade over the uh, 500 by default, and I think it just gains 105 per level. Do it 25 times, and now it adds up to quite a bit. One large spider kill the boss, then the minions die as well. That's often the case with summoners. Their minions are linked, and there is a uh, unique spider in there. Her nah, the Dread Widow. Or unique, unique, it's a heroic one. Seal slamming it in the face a couple times. Lots of poison. It hurts. But that's alright. Let me just drink ourselves a life potion since we're not really doing anything useful with them. And yeah. It was one of these long caverns that had a passage and I just found it. That's good. Because there's hidden spoils here. And lots of green items. And I like green items. Sometimes they are actually stuff that you can wear. So, 2.3 energy. That is a downgrade. A bit of ether damage, a bit of offensive ability. Nah. Ooh, green upgrade for our current uh, yellow. Maybe. There's no health on here. There's less resist and the damage bonuses are mismatched. So, nope, not really. Uh, nope. Okay. So I guess we did not get an upgrade there. But the vendors, they, they, they don't care. They will find someone to sell it to. Or not. Maybe they just have storerooms filled with all kinds of items I sold to them that no one ever actually wants. But as long as I have more money to buy more stuff, I don't really mind whether their business is profitable or not. Um, I'm really, really not too interested in the uh, business dealings of the merchants in games.
I, I don't think most of the mer merchants actually make a profit. They just uh, summoned money out of thin air to buy your stuff. So effectively, you can summon money out of thin air by proxy of them. Just like monsters just now summon all the uh, items that they drop out of thin air. I don't think there are really a lot of games where... Or I don't think there are any games that actually have a finite supply of material in the world. And a finite supply of no, money or money-like items. There's there's always something, you know, uh, a, a faucet, so to say, that just pours items and money and, and whatever into the world. And on the other hand, you have different uh, drains where resources leave the game. And in between, you as the player stand. I think oh, EVE Online probably comes closest. Uh, no, Space-based uh, MMO, been around for a long time. I think it might be actually one of the oldest still operating MMOs out there, though I think technically EverQuest 1 is still uh, online, so that probably has a beat, but it, it, it's, it's not from the early 2000s. And in EVE Online, just about everything in the game is craftable by players, and most things are. Players know they mine asteroids uh, for materials and then they craft things with that. But the thing is, now every day there's an hour of downtime in the game. And during that time, the asteroid fields magically regrow themselves. So again, now that is a place where items do get summoned out of a thin air and put into the world. But on the other hand, now if... Ships get destroyed, they just get destroyed, and no part of the uh, items stay behind as loot, and uh, another part is just lost forever. Whereas if you had a, a game world which uh, no had perfectly uh, kept everything around, then of course killing something no just turns it into scrap, completely everything maintained. You might have broken things. But you would have a, a perfect uh, retention of, of energy and matter. And the same would be for you know, magic systems. If you have a game with, with a magic system, then mana would have to come from somewhere. So maybe if you're you know, recharging your mana by just absorbing uh, energy out of the air around you, then the air around you should actually have a value for how much mana is in the air around you and if a lot of magic is used in a place then the place should be drained of mana which you know, could actually have all kinds of gameplay effects and things like that and similarly unleashing mana uh, or using mana to cast spells could actually release the energy back into the air to be absorbed by others and then no oh, could work maybe a little bit like temperature where it just averages out over time in the world and things like that also let's spend our devotion point quickly before we're gonna get attacked because i did see movement but oh no wait it's it's dogs versus ethereals and the EV boards are mine I figure, no, let's actually just make this into an uh, extended length episode and just go after Warden Creek. It's, uh, it, it's relatively quick to get there from here. Okay, you're taking quite some damage here because there's, no, there's some artillery things, there's some, some pumped up zombies. And now the damage being dealt to me kind of on par with the amount of life that I'm leeching from enemies. But yeah, no, the, what I just described, a magic system that works like that, I've never seen it before. And oh man, I think it's, might be a system that I, I, I thought of like 20 years ago and haven't actually seen it in any games before. I've, I've always been obsessed with games and game design. 
Um, it's one of the reasons why I you know, started on the uh, started as a programmer and why I actually learned programming because I wanted my own games. But this this no this this obsession with how games work and, and all kinds of things relating to it. There, there's some some concepts that haven't been done before, and oftentimes it's easy to um, focus on on the accuracy of the simulation of a world, and forget that you that the game is a game and not a simulation, and the game needs to be fun. And it might be that you know, a lot of those mechanics. Well, they might be you know, realistic. They might just not be fun enough to do. So I, I was gonna put points into all abilities here. So it's all passives. Fighting spirit, whenever we take damage, there's a small chance that we're gonna get a boost that does more damage and gives more offensive ability to me. Men here's will, if my health drops below 33%, gonna get a heal and a bit of health regen. And military conditioning, more physique and more health. And while I was explaining that, all these zombies died. I like my defensive passives. So, Crystal Cluster, that is of course the one that controls a bunch of the summons. Not all, but a bunch. Things like these Ember Guards are the ones that you probably want to focus on. No, just like the Overseers. So they are the sturdy ones. And all everything else is usually going to die by proxy. Because we do have some, uh, some nice area of effect abilities. Uh, let's see. There you are. Wow, I actually forgot to spend spirit uh, twice in a row. Let's see, 18, that needs to be 200. Yeah, that's more spirits. Which means more damage and more regen. I like it. So another ether crystal. So that's even more crafting I can do. Or more devotion shrines I can activate. Because that's often what it turns into as well. At least on the in Act 1. It's later on we're gonna get more items that get used. Early on everything is an ether crystal, which is alright. No. Um Especially for a first time player, you are guaranteed to get a lot of ether crystals because you know, there are crystals all around. Having like a, a completed uh, claw or, or something else, that might be the first one that you actually completed that you wanted to put in your weapon and then having to put it into a devotion shrine would be a bit of a letdown. That, that's, let's, let's phrase that carefully. It would be a little bit, a bit of a letdown bit of a disappointment for some players. So not only using the more uh, plentiful resources is a better choice there. Which is now why it's not until like Act 2 or 3 where you need to start putting some, some slightly more common uh, components in. And why it's not until Elite and Ultimate where you are drowning in all the low level stuff. Where they actually ask you sometimes to you know, craft some more difficult component, some some slightly higher tier things. And even then, now if you plan your route carefully, then you don't even need to sacrifice that many items. Because no, uh, there's plenty of shrines where you can you know, get away with simply fighting something. And there are more shrines in the game than devotion points that you can have as a player. So you can pick and choose a little bit. Okay, so here we can just lean to the left with a bit of luck. Garbrandt is gonna be here. No, oh, he's not here. It's Garbrandt, Catherine, something along those lines. So I wanna grab that one. Ah, nice. Thank you for breaking the uh, couch for me. Also, some slightly tougher zombos. And actually, the door is open on the end. Uh, Oh, but then that one is locked. Okay, that doesn't help me much. Oh, treasure chests. Or an strong box. Well, click it, let pathfinding do its work. One of the nice features of this game. And we get ourselves a sacrificial knife of a venom claw. That sounds poisonous. So I don't think it's going to be all that relevant to me. 
Acid poison. Uh, no fire and poison resist. It's not bad, but I do like my ether lightning. Silly as it is, but it's it's it is just a nice to have thing. And there is a mind rager in the back, an overmind. Sorry. Effectively, they're just the footballs with telepathic abilities. <laughs> Exploding. I do like the sight of that. It's always just satisfying if any enemies just explode. Okay. It's uh, quite a walk to get actually to the next section. Oh, hello there. Butchers. And there we are. Oh, ask a look. You're just a random hero. You're not the one I was looking for. Makes me wonder though, where is the one I was looking for? It is in the next room and it's coming in there. Oh no. Two heroes at the same time. Phew. Disaster averted. Not really. I don't think we were ever really in danger. Well, burning aura here. Uh, it can hurt. Summon zombies, they can hurt. If you were in this room, were you maybe also hiding something? No, not even. Oh. I looked. So then past here, past there. And then we can get through to the next floor, to the inner lab. Okay, there is a bit of a uh, secret. Also, was it here? No, actually it was in the next section. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Uh, there's a... Uh, oh, I do need to crawl up, don't I? Okay, then we're not gonna do it. In case you're wondering what I'm talking about. Uh, if you get up on the uh, the ramp above, then you can go downstairs here. And then in this room, in the bottom part of it, is a cave or a tunnel that leads you in here. And there's a, a network of caves here with some spider bosses. Fighting spiders is fun. Uh, especially, you know, fighting heroes is fun. And there's some, some unique spiders in there with some uh, potential for decent drops. But it's gonna be a little too much effort to backtrack, so we're just gonna do the simple thing. And just uh, push forward and take out the boss. Because while well, the episode it is long enough already, I always find excuses to just do a bit more content, do a little bit more, and then you end up with like 40 or 50 minute episodes. But we need to just you know, try and keep episodes a little bit more consistent at like you know, half an hour. Rather than having the extra, extra long ones in between. Because now, now if you expect an episode to be around half an hour and it's twice as long, it might be inconvenient or difficult with, with watching it if you get too many of those. Well, no, on the other hand, no, some people are like, but but I want more, I want more. No, do three hour episodes every day. Come on, I want more. But well, not everybody has that much time. So trying to be a little bit consistent is better in the bigger picture. So here is the other guaranteed unique down here, Zembrandt the Ascendant. Former colleague of Gethrand, who we just murdered. And one of them turned on the other, made them an unwilling experiment, and the other one willingly became an experiment, I, if I remember my law correctly. Either way, they are now possessed, and there's not much more remaining of either original person, because now an ethereal has taken over. And there's a bit of lore here, uh, loot here, a bit more stuff. And another one that bites the dust. Let's see. 
Vitality, Chaos, ooh, 3.5 energy per second, and Chaos Resistance. Tempting, tempting. Um, actually, when I say tempting, we do have 9% energy regen from the other one. I think we might actually lose energy here. Yep, exactly. So, it's tempting, but not an upgrade. This helmet, yes, more armor. Yes, double resists. No, not enough energy. Uh, I think just uh, mostly rubbish. We can just ignore it. Let's see, we hit 19. Need more spirit, and then we can spend skill points. Um, we just did. So let's see, one more point into spectral binding. Gonna keep that one up. And then we could spend some points getting towards the next level, but I could also spend a couple more points getting these abilities here into somewhat more useful shape. And I think I'm gonna do that. So first up, we're gonna push Fighting Spirit to level five, if I remember correctly, because that's the cutoff where you no longer get four additional percentage points per level, but only uh, three. And then you got a 22% chance of it activating, which is good enough. Now that's one in every five hits that you receive makes you go into a murderous rage, which uh, is helpful. And now, Warden Creek, level 19. That's, uh, I think that that's pretty much on schedule. So he's, he's sturdy, he's tanky. Face tanking him. I'm um, gonna outlast him. He simply cannot do enough here. The uh, yellow glow here is the uh, tortoise shell. Kicks in at 40% health. Which is good. No, it allows me to uh, recover my health in other means. Like slurping down these uh, zombos. Okay, Warden Creek is hitting me, hitting me. Okay, let's drink a potion. Well, I always try to make a game out of it. Just uh, trying to not having to drink my potions if I have other means of recovery. This early on though, we just don't have those. And let's drink another potion. And I think technically it was not needed, but no. Uh, hardcore and all that. Let's err a little bit on the side of caution. And we get a lot of loot here. And was any of it good? Defender of Devil's Crossing. Less damage received from ether, ethereals and ether corruptions. Uh, total increase in armor and defensive ability, but uh, no seismic blast. On the other hand, 26% chance to block 225 damage. It is massively better in terms of defenses. Even though we will be losing out on some, some resists. Um, you know what? We're actually going to upgrade into it. And then we can put that one in. Will we... No, we won't. We will have Spectral Wrath next level. So we're actually not going to go from a shield that has 18 plus 10 is 28% chance to block to one that has 26% chance to block and boost all of my armor across the board, which is pretty neat. Acolyte's Court, bonus to all damage, spirit and offensive ability. Uh, I think the, the spirit might actually replace the energy regen here, though. Physique and energy on the other one, I don't think that actually is the case. We'll lose energy here. Let's say, let's guess, 35? Hmm, not as bad as I expected. So 36 and a bit. So 0.4 energy in exchange for more damage, more offensive ability. Oh, well, that's pretty much a, a very simple upgrade, isn't it? And also, I'm not going to put new scavenged components in or scavenged platings. Because something like a um, anti-venom solve will have more armor and gives me um, uh, poison resistance, for example. So better items aren't going to be uh, there. Warden's Fortress of Barricades. Reduced shield recovery time, increased health and physique, physical resistance, ether resistance, plus two to blitz, reduced blitz recharge rate. And characteristics kind of along the same lines. I think I actually like this one better because we will get access to Blitz in a couple of levels. 
a new helmet, less energy regen, more other defensive properties, but we also lose armor. So I think we'll just ignore that one for now. Shoulder pads, these are worse than what we have. Guns, not quite useful anymore, especially once we get blitz, then we can't even can't use guns anymore. Well, we can, but then blitz doesn't work. So I think in terms of gear upgrades, that is it. So let's head back to town. And then it is time to wrap up one chapter of the story and go hunting for Apocalypse Cowboys. So Warden Creek is gone. Went to the way of the dodo. Okay, more stuff, more scrap. Uh, just uh, effectively a setup because we will need some of our uh, scrap and iron bits to unlock uh, the bridge over here. And that's always a good habit to just open it before doing anything else in town because it's easy to uh, outspend your money or scrap. And then you need to go back to farm stuff to actually open the bridge. It's, I don't know, the, the, the bridge repair mechanic, I understand. It's a bit of a barrier to prevent players from pushing forward in the story. On the other hand, it's a little fiddly sometimes. And it that can lead to some things where you accidentally lock yourself out of progress until you uh, farm for certain things. So is there anything in here that is useful? I don't think so. I mean, these bludgeon things, you use force wave. We don't use force wave. Um, that one was less good. Uh, we already sorted through everything. Freeze immunity for uh, 450 seconds. That's actually not a bad thing. And there is a that. So are we friendly enough with Devil's Crossing for the uh, faction table? No, we are not. I need 1,500 more respect to get access to the bounty table. So the only way to get rep more reputation with Devil's Crossing is by killing Cronish Gang, which we won't encounter until we cross the bridge and go into the uh, cowboy area. And I think that that's one of the, the oddest choices from a, a, a game perspective. The uh, no Cronish Gang effectively is restricted to this area. So that's going to be the next two episodes, maybe three if I'm really slow about it. And after that, we won't see an another cowboy anymore for the remainder of Veteran. So that's now two or three episodes out of like 30 episodes. That's the only bit of the game where you can get, naturally can get reputation outside of doing quests for the faction. So, I don't know, Devil's Crossing is diff more difficult to... Uh, get reputation for as a result I think simply because you won't naturally get it by killing enemies that you're gonna kill anyway but well that aside for now though I'm gonna thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again next time when we take on the apocalypse cowboys bye bye